This week, asked Dr. Dury is a recurring question for the last uh, two or three years, actually, uh, but is, is a pressing concern for many patients. And uh, the question is two part. Uh, number one, is minimal residual disease testing routinely recommended? And part two, if it is recommended, what type of test is recommended to be done? And so uh, the first part of the answer is that as of now, minimal residual disease testing is actually not routinely recommended. And so this is because although it is extremely important to know the depth of the response and to know that depth of the response at a very sensitive level, we still need to understand what we will do with that information in terms of recommendations for the patient. And so minimal residual disease testing means that using a bone marrow sample, one can look at, for example, one million cells uh, using a flow cytometer, for example, where the cells would pass through the cytometer. And then one can look to see if one out of a million cells is a myeloma cell. And so if this testing is negative, such that there are zero or no myeloma cells uh, present, then we call this uh, undetected or MRD zero or negative at this one million level, which is also called 10 to the minus six. And so what one frequently sees is that a bone marrow test was MRD negative at this 10 to the minus six level. So this is obviously good. It's good to have the myeloma knocked down to this extremely low level, and it means that a complete remission is even better than one might have uh, been suspecting before having the test. The question emerges, though, in terms of the routine use and what one will do with this information. If, for example, the MRD test is indeed negative, what are we going to recommend? Do we feel confident enough that we can say, okay, you can go ahead and stop treatment at this exact moment? The answer to that is actually no, we don't currently have that high level of confidence. And so what about if the test is positive? If there is a little bit of remaining disease, does this mean that we need to immediately change the treatment or uh, move to some much more aggressive therapy? And the answer to that is no, because there can be a little bit of myeloma left with ongoing treatment, and this could turn out to be absolutely fine. And so the answer to the first part of the question is that because we don't really know what to recommend uh, with the test results, we do not routinely recommend that the testing be done. And so the follow-on question, which is puzzling for many, many patients is, well, why are we doing this testing and under what circumstances are we doing it? And the answer is that we are doing this within clinical trials. We test within clinical trials to see if one type of treatment produces more patients who are MRD negative versus another treatment where the amount of patients or number of patients achieving MRD negative status is left. And this helps to tell us that one treatment might be better than another. And so this is a very, very crucial stage in the MRT testing clinical trials work where we use it to compare one treatment versus another. And so within that setting, there are two tests that we can use, a molecular test and a flow cytometry test. The molecular test is called Next Generation Sequencing, NGS, and this has actually been approved for use by the FDA. The other flow test is called NGF, next generation flow. Now this is a, a standardized test which is used within clinical trials, but as a test has not yet been approved at the FDA level. And so the confusion is, okay, so if a test has been approved at the FDA level, why don't we routinely recommend the use of the test? And that's because there is this crucial next step to show, although the test is a reliable test, how do we actually use it in clinical practice? And this is that crucial step that is ongoing to, to understand what will be the recommendations, how do we use this information, and uh, what will be uh, the outcomes. So bottom line, 
uh, we do not yet routinely recommend uh, testing in the clinic. However, we do basically routinely recommend it within clinical trials so we can assess and compare treatments. And as far as the testing, we are looking and evaluating both NGS and GF within our trials to see the relative benefits of each of those.